My husband hid a year-long secret with his ex. Now I'm left questioning if our marriage was ever real. I, 28F, recently found out that my husband Tom, 30 Mem, has been secretly talking to his ex-girlfriend Sarah, 29F, for the past year. We've been married for three years and together for six. I always thought we had a good, honest relationship, but now I'm not sure anymore. Tom and I met in college. We were in the same study group for our economics class. At first, we were just friends, but over time, our relationship grew into something more. Tom was always kind, funny, and supportive. He was there for me when my parents went through a messy divorce during our senior year. We started dating officially just before graduation. After college, we both got jobs in the same city. Tom worked as an accountant, and I got a job in marketing. We moved in together after a year of dating and things were great. We had our ups and downs like any couple, but we always managed to work through our problems. Tom proposed on our third anniversary. It was a simple proposal at our favorite restaurant, but it was perfect for us. We got married a year later in a small ceremony with just our close friends and family. I thought I knew everything about Tom's past relationships. He told me he had dated Sarah for about a year in college before we met. According to Tom, they broke up because they wanted different things in Zim life. He said they hadn't spoken since the breakup, and I had no reason to doubt him. Last week, I accidentally saw a message pop up on Tom's phone while he was in the shower. Um, it was from Sarah, and it said, Can't wait to see you tomorrow. Miss you. I was confused and upset. Um, Tom had told me he hadn't talked to Sarah in years. When Tom got out of the shower, I confronted him about the message. Um, at first, he tried to say it must have been a mistake or spam. But when I pressed him, he finally admitted that he'd been talking to Sarah for about a year. Tom said he ran into Sarah at a coffee shop last year. They exchanged numbers, and they've been talking ever since. He claimed it was just friendly catching up and nothing more. He said he didn't tell me because he knew I'd be upset, and he didn't want to cause problems in our marriage. I asked to see their conversations, but Tom refused. He said it would be wrong to share Sarah's private messages. This made me even more suspicious. If there's nothing to hide, why can't I see the messages? I don't know what to think. Tom has always been a good husband. He's never given me any reason to doubt him before. But he's always been loving and attentive. We have a good life together. We both have stable jobs, we just bought our first house last year, and we've been talking about starting a family soon. But now I'm questioning everything. Has our whole relationship been built on lies? What else might Tom be hiding from me? I've been staying with my sister Jenny, 32F, for the past few days. I needed some space to think. Jenny thinks I should leave Tom. She says once trust is broken, it's hard to get it back. My best friend Megan, 27F, has a different opinion. She thinks I should give Tom another chance and try to work things out. Tom has been calling and texting me nonstop. He keeps saying he's sorry and that he'll do anything to make things right. He even offered to stop talking to Sarah completely. But I'm not sure if that's enough. I'm also angry at Sarah. She knew Tom was married, but she still kept talking to him behind my back. Part of me wants to contact her and ask for her side of the story, but I'm not sure if that's a good idea. This whole situation has made me think about my parents' divorce. They split up because my dad had an affair. I remember how hurt and betrayed my mom felt. I never thought I'd be in a similar situation. I've always been proud of my relationship with Tom. We were the couple that our friends looked up to. We rarely fought, we supported each other's careers, and we had a lot of the same goals in life. We wanted to buy a house, which we did, start a family, and maybe even start our own business someday. Now, I'm not sure about any of those plans. Can I trust Tom to be a good father if he can lie to me so easily? Can we really start a business together if I'm always wondering what he's hiding from me? I keep thinking back to all the times in the past year when Tom was on his phone more than usual. At the time, I thought he was just busy with work. Now, I wonder if he was talking to Sarah all those times. I'm also thinking about all the little things that might have been signs. There were a few times when Tom got defensive if I asked who he was texting. Once, he quickly put his phone away when I walked into the room. At the time, I didn't think much of it, but now it all seems suspicious. I'm not sure what to do next. Part of me wants to fight for our marriage. We've built a life together, and it seems wrong to throw it all away over this. But another part of me wonders if I can ever trust Tom again. If I stay with Tom, will I always be wondering if he's telling me the truth? Though I become the kind of wife who's always checking her husband's phone or questioning his whereabouts? I don't want to be that person. But if I leave Tom, what then? We've been together for so long that I'm not sure who I am without him. The thought of starting over at 28 is scary. What if I never find someone else? So what if I regret leaving? I'm looking for advice on how to proceed. Should I give Tom another chance? Should I demand to see all his messages with Sarah? Should I reach out to Sarah myself? Or should I just file for divorce and move on? I never thought I'd be in this situation. I always thought Tom and I were different. We were supposed to be the couple that made it. Now, I feel like I don't know anything anymore. Any advice or similar experiences would be really helpful. I feel so lost and alone right now. Update one, thank you all for your advice and support on my last post. A lot has happened in the past few weeks, and I wanted to give you an update. After staying with my sister for a week, 
I decided to go back home and talk to Tom. We had a long conversation where he swore nothing physical had happened between him and Sarah. He offered to show me all their messages, which I accepted. Reading through their conversations was eye-opening. While there wasn't anything explicitly romantic or sexual, there was definitely a closeness that made me uncomfortable. They shared inside jokes, complained about their jobs, and even discussed some of our marital problems. It hurt to see Tom talking to his ex about issues in our relationship instead of talking to me. Tom agreed to stop all contact with Sarah and gave me full access to his phone and social media accounts. He also suggested we try couples counseling to work on our communication and rebuild trust. I was starting to think that maybe we could work things out. Tom seemed sorry and was trying to be more open. We even had a few good days where things almost felt normal again. But then, something unexpected happened. Sarah reached out to me on Facebook. Her message said, I'm sorry for my part in all of this. I never meant to cause problems in your marriage. There's something you should know, though. Tom isn't being completely honest about our relationship. I was shocked. Just when I thought things were getting better, this happened. I didn't respond to Sarah right away. Instead, I asked Tom about it. He got really nervous when I mentioned Sarah's message and said she must be lying to cause trouble. I didn't know who to believe. Tom had been trying to regain my trust. But why would Sarah reach out to me if she didn't have something important to say? I decided to meet Sarah in person to hear what she had to say. We agreed to meet at a cafe downtown. Sarah told me that while she and Tom hadn't been physical, their relationship wasn't innocent. She showed me messages that Tom had deleted from his phone. In these messages, Tom talked about how much he missed her and how he sometimes wondered if he had made a mistake in marrying me. When I confronted Tom with this new information, he broke down. He admitted that he had been having doubts about our marriage for a while, but didn't know how to bring it up. He said he loved me, but wasn't sure if he was still in love with me. I packed a bag and went back to my sister's place. I feel devastated and angry. I feel stupid for believing Tom's lies and for thinking we could work things out. I'm not sure what to do next. Part of me wants to try to save our marriage, but another part of me wonders if it's even possible now. Can I ever trust Tom again after all these lies? I'm also conflicted about Sarah. I'm grateful that she told me the truth, but I'm also angry that she kept talking to Tom knowing he was married. I've made an appointment with a divorce lawyer next week just to understand my options. I haven't made any decisions yet, but I want to be prepared for everything. This whole situation has made me question a lot of things. I've been thinking back to the early days of our relationship, trying to see if there were any signs I missed. I was Tom always like this and I just didn't see it. Or did something change along the way? I remember how Tom was always the good guy in our friend group. He was the one who never forgot birthdays, who always offered to be the designated driver, who was always there when someone needed help moving. It's hard to reconcile that image of Tom with the person who could lie to me for so long. I've also been thinking about my own role in all of this. Was I not attentive enough? Did I take Tom for granted? I thought we were happy, but maybe I was just seeing what I wanted to see. My friends and family have been really supportive. My sister has been letting me stay with her, no questions asked. My best friend Megan comes over almost every day just to sit with me or distract me with silly TV shows. Even my coworkers have been understanding, letting me take some time off to deal with everything. Tom has been trying to contact me. He keeps calling and texting, begging for another chance. He says he'll do anything to make things right. He's even offered to go to individual therapy to work on his issues. But I'm not sure if that's enough. I've been doing a lot of thinking about what I want for my future. Before all this happened, Tom and I had so many plans. We were talking about starting a family soon. We had even started looking at bigger houses and good school districts. Now, all those plans feel like they're on hold. Part of me still loves Tom. We've been through so much together, and I can't just turn off my feelings overnight. But I also don't know if love is enough anymore. Can I ever look at him the same way again? Can I ever trust him to be honest with me? I'm also scared of being alone. Tom and I have been together for so long that I'm not sure who I am without him. The thought of dating again is terrifying. What if I never find someone else? What if I end up regretting leaving Tom? But then I think about staying with Tom, and that scares me too. What if I stay and he betrays me again? What if I spend the rest of my life wondering if he's telling me the truth? I don't want to be the kind of wife who's always checking her husband's phone or questioning his every move. I'm trying to take things one day at a time, but it's hard. Some days I feel strong and sure that I'll be okay, no matter what happens. Other days, I can barely get out of bed. I'll update again once I've had some time to process everything and decide on my next steps. Thank you all for your support during this difficult time. Update 2 has been a crazy couple of months since my last update, and I have some surprising news to share. After meeting with a divorce lawyer, I was pretty sure I was going to end my marriage to Tom. The lies and betrayal just seemed too big to overcome. But then, something unexpected happened that changed everything. Tom's brother Jack, 32M, reached out to me. He said he had something important to tell me and asked if we could meet. Curious and a bit nervous, I agreed. What Jack told me turned everything upside down again. Apparently, Tom had told Jack the real reason he had been talking to Sarah. It wasn't because he still had feelings for her or was unhappy in our marriage. 
so the truth was much more complicated. According to Jack, about a year ago, Tom got a call from Sarah. She told him that she had been diagnosed with a rare type of cancer and didn't have much time left. She asked Tom not to tell anyone, including me, because she didn't want people to treat her differently. Tom, feeling guilty about how their relationship ended years ago, agreed to be there for her as a friend during her final months. He kept it a secret from me because he knew how I felt about Sarah and didn't want to cause any unnecessary stress in our relationship. I was shocked. This explanation put everything in a new light. The secret messages, the emotional support, even the comments about missing her, it all made sense if Sarah was sick. I confronted Tom with this information. At first, he was angry at Jack for telling me, but then he broke down and confirmed everything. He showed me medical documents and messages that proved Sarah's condition. Tom explained that he had wanted to tell me the truth many times, but he had promised Sarah he wouldn't, and he felt stuck between his loyalty to her and his love for me. He said he never meant to hurt me, and that he had been struggling with keeping the secret for months. I'm still trying to process all of this information. On one hand, I understand why Tom kept this secret. He was trying to be there for a dying friend. On the other hand, I'm hurt that he didn't trust me enough to tell me the truth, even when our marriage was falling apart. I reached out to Sarah to confirm the story, and she apologized for the deception. She said she never meant to come between Tom and me, and that she only reached out to me before, because she felt guilty about the secret they were keeping. I'm not sure how to feel, Part of me is relieved that Tom wasn't having an emotional affair, but another part of me is still hurt by all the lies and secrecy. Tom and I have decided to give our marriage another chance. We're in couples counseling now, working on rebuilding trust and improving our communication. It's not easy. And there are days when I still feel angry and betrayed, but we're trying. This whole experience has made me realize how complex relationships can be. It's not always as simple as right or wrong, faithful or unfaithful. Sometimes, good people make bad decisions for what they think are the right reasons. We're taking things day by day. I don't know what the future holds for us, but I'm cautiously optimistic. Thank you all for your support throughout this ordeal. Update 3, it's been half a year since my last update, and I wanted to share where things stand now. Tom and I are still together, but our relationship has changed a lot. We've been going to couples counseling regularly, which has helped us work through many of our issues. We've learned to communicate better and be more honest with each other, even when it's difficult. Sarah passed away about three months ago. Tom attended her funeral, and this time he was open with me about it. I chose not to go, but I supported his decision to be there for her family. The experience of almost losing our marriage has made us both realize how much we value each other. Tom has been working hard to rebuild my trust, and while it's been a slow process, I can see his efforts. That being said, things aren't perfect. I still have moments of doubt and insecurity. Sometimes I find myself checking Tom's phone or questioning his whereabouts, even though he's given me no reason to distrust him since the truth came out. We've had to redefine boundaries in our relationship. We now have an agreement of total transparency, no secrets, no matter how well-intentioned. It's not always easy, but it's necessary for us to move forward. Our friends and family have been supportive, although some, like my sister Jenny, are still wary of Tom. I appreciate their concern, but I've made it clear that this is my decision to make. Looking back, I can see how this experience has changed me. I'm stronger now, more assertive about my needs and feelings. I've learned that it's okay to forgive, but it's also okay to take time to heal. As for Tom and me, we're cautiously optimistic about our future. We're planning a vow renewal ceremony for our upcoming anniversary, a fresh start of sorts. I'm sharing this final update to say thank you to everyone who supported me through this difficult time. Your advice and kind words help me more than you know. To those who might be going through similar situations, I want to say this, trust your instincts, but also be open to the possibility that there might be more to the story. Communication and honesty are crucial, and sometimes relationships can survive even the biggest challenges if both partners are willing to put in the work. Thank you all once again. While this chapter of my life is closing, I feel like I'm starting a new one, wiser and stronger than before. Next story, my 35F, Sister Kelly's 25F, boyfriend is in the hospital undergoing surgery and will not be able to work for a while. Kelly has been mentioning how stressed they are trying to prepare for this surgery loss of income and worries she won't be able to take care of him. Last night, she called to ask if I could walk their dog tomorrow since she has been cooped up in the house while Kelly works. She rarely asks for favors and I could tell she was upset. Should we talked a bit more and I asked if she needed anything I could bring with me when I came over, if she had eaten anything a cuck. She started crying and said she burnt her last few eggs that morning and couldn't afford anything other than Raymond, but she would be okay. Work extra and figure it out. So my heart broke a little. I remember being so hungry living in my car in my late teens, 
Then struggling with my husband in our 20s with young kids, I didn't have anyone to help me through my tough times, and I don't want her to ever feel so alone. We are not rich, but we're well enough off that we can afford what we need with some extras. With Kelly, I'd never let her starve and asked if she had any requests that I could make for her. Simple things that would be offered to anyone I love going through a tough time without a second thought. She put up resistance but said she would take anything I was willing to give. That night I Ubered her dinner since I couldn't make it over. So my husband Lucian seemed upset but said it was nothing when I asked if he was okay why he was upset. I let it go as he tends to become more upset when pushed. I made extra dinner, extra muffins, and decided that I'd spend $100 on Staples, a toy for the dog, since we had a bit of extra cash this month. So when Lucian came out of our bedroom from playing Xbox after the kids were in bed and saw me organizing the things I bought writing instructions for easy recipes, he was pissed and went off that she never helped you like this. Why would you do all of this shit? I told him that she was a child when I was younger. How would she have helped me? Even if that was true, that doesn't matter. Nobody deserves to go hungry, especially not family and friends. We went back and forth, eventually with him saying I wasted my time and money on someone who doesn't deserve all of this. What about us? What if I want banana bread? I sell. You pee put nuts in it. I don't like nuts and me telling him that he was being incredibly selfish. We have plenty to eat. I made a batch without nuts for him, and there's more of everything for the family if he would just look. I'd understand if we were struggling, but I'm not going to sit idly by while Kelly goes hungry because you don't like me spending time caring for someone other than you. Ah, he stomped off and has refused to come out of our bedroom all day besides to grab some snacks, ignoring the food I've made. Um, I know he wants me to apologize, but it just feels wrong. Ada for feeding my sister and calling my husband selfish. Next story, I, 34F, have a 10-year-old son we'll call Arthur. I adopted him when he was two as his godparent after his mother passed away and his father was never in the picture. Arthur has always had trouble making friends. But he made a great one this past year, a 10-year-old boy in his grade, who we'll call Elliot. I didn't plan on it, but Elliot's father, 38 Mem, who we'll call Edward, and I became very close. So we come from very different backgrounds. Edward grew up in a stable, high-income home, mostly raising Elliot in Europe until about a year and a half ago when they moved to our area. I grew up in a poor family and was raised by my uncle after my mother died. I had a rough childhood and was involved in crime when I was younger, but I've been on the straight and narrow for Arthur's sake. I didn't want my relationship with Edward to affect Arthur and Elliot's friendship, but after agreeing that the boys would always come first, we began loosely dating about a year ago. Ah. A few weeks ago, Arthur got really sick while Edward was watching him. I was an hour away fixing something at a friend's house, and Edward took Arthur to the ER when things got worse. His appendix had burst. When I got there, Arthur was in surgery, and he went into anaphylactic shock due to the anesthetic. The doctors started asking about family medical history, and I couldn't provide any information since I'm not biologically related to Arthur. I never knew his mother's family. Edward tried to help, but I was panicked and lashed out, saying that Arthur wasn't my biological son. A thing that Arthur wasn't my biological son. Edward walked away to give me space. Arthur's fine now, but he had some complications and spent a few weeks in the hospital. Since then, Edward and I have barely spoken because of an argument that followed. Edward was upset that I hadn't told him Arthur was adopted. I can understand why, but it never came up, and I didn't see the point in mentioning it. I wasn't hiding it, but I didn't have concrete plans to tell him, either. The situation escalated, and we both said hurtful things. I brought up Elliot's mother, who I knew nothing about. I didn't really care about her, but I made it seem like I did. From what I knew, Edward had raised Elliot on his own. I feel like our situations are similar, but Edward insists they're different. He says it's relevant that Arthur isn't biologically mine, but I don't think it changes anything. I didn't want Arthur to know he was adopted before he could fully understand. So we've never had an argument like this before. The only time we had a similar conversation was when I told him about my past. Um, I felt like that was relevant because it directly involved me. He was understanding then, and there wasn't nearly as much conflict. Now I'm unsure if not telling him about Arthur was the right decision. He's a kind man, but this caught me off guard, and we both said things we regret. Aita for not telling my boyfriend my son is adopted. Um, 